What's up guys, this is Kevin the Tech Ninja and this video is gonna be sort of a tutorial on how I make my videos look good. But there are many things you can do to make something look good. Now I don't have the best videos in the world but this video was requested a lot and maybe you can learn some new tricks or some ways to make things go a little bit faster. Now if you have questions about how my setup is, how I shoot, how I edit, then you can check out the video playlist down below. But this video is how I color correct, edit b-roll, get nice thumbnails, and make things look smooth for my channel. So let's get into it. Number one, a thumbnail can make or break a video. I'm not a graphic guy, so a lot of times I need help with thumbnails. I use a lot of people in the past to make my thumbnails like Fury Pixel and other great graphic designers. But right now I want to give my homie Osa from Tech Dynasty a shout out as he's been doing them right now. I'll link him down below. But let's say you don't have the skills or you don't have an Osa to help out. You can download stock footage as your template, which I do often, then add some nice poppy text and you got yourself a pretty good looking thumbnail. Now if you need stock footage, then graphicstock.com is here to fill that void, and thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Now if you don't know what graphic stock is, graphicstock.com gives you access to the largest unlimited download library on the net. You can get images, photos, and even vectors from them. This comes in handy if you're looking to create or update a website, make a thumbnail for your YouTube channel, or if you're a photographer looking for a stock image. Regardless on what you're trying to do, you do have over 300,000 items to choose from. It's 100% royalty free guarantee, meaning you can use anything you download without risk or copyright infringement. Right now it's a 7 day no risk free trial and this gives you access to 140 pieces of content so get the downloading. You can sign up for the annual plan for $99, check out graphicstock.com for my link down below or go to graphicstock.com slash YouTube to take advantage of this offer. Number 2, when I shoot video I shoot pretty flat and the reason behind this is that it gives me some room to make adjustments to my image. Out of the camera on standard the video looks overly contrasty meaning my skin ends up looking orange like our president. And I don't like that. Not the president, but, but the orange. So with the flatter profile, I gradually can color adjust, meaning I can simply add a little bit of contrast here and there. And that contrast I adjust gives me the proper color. I also adjust the highs and lows and mids using the vector scope as my guide. I'll also link down below what a vector scope is to explain that a little bit better, but basically it's the colors as the computer sees it. Now once I find something I like, I apply an adjustment layer and that covers anything beneath it with that color grade. As of this video, Final Cut does not have adjustment layers, but I'll put a link down below to a company that actually made an adjustment layer for free. Now not all cameras have flat profiles, but if you look at your camera and it has profiles, find one that has something that looks a bit more washed out, something that doesn't have as much color, and that'll be your best bet. Now once my image is color graded, I play the video and I cut out mistakes. Now here's a pro tip if you're editing a lot, you want to try to make the next clip behind the clip you're currently on a different size, maybe one to four percent, and that makes the jump cut less jarring. It's sort of a hidden trick that a lot of YouTubers do. So next time you watch your favorite YouTuber and they have a roll, watch that jump cut and watch how the frame sort of zooms in a little bit. Now once that is done, drop in some B-roll and you are good to go. Now I've discussed my B-roll method before when shooting, and I have that link down below, but Color correcting after b-rolling is the exact same process. Shoot as much b-roll as possible because this can hide problems in your a-roll. If you're messing up a ton, you're doing a lot of jump cuts, throw b-roll all over it and you can't even tell you're messing up. B-roll is really my number one mistake fixer. Number five, this, this is kind of silly, but trim the ends. What I mean by that is that when you're doing a pan, the first few frames of the pan is going to be the most unstable part. Just start the footage once you have the pan going. Same for the ends. The end of the pan is usually bad. Now if you have a good fluid drag head, I'll, I'll link the one that I use below, then you can even pan and stop and have a consistent pan, but that does require some decent gear to do so. Anyways guys, those were my top 5 tricks to make good video. Don't forget, I have a YouTube playlist where I discuss all my video tips and tricks, so check that out. I'm Kevin the Tech Ninja, and subscribe for more video tutorials and also tech reviews. Take care, guys. Peace.
again, KTTN, say it again. Tell a friend or tell a friend that it's him again. Hey, yo, real talk, opinions gon' be sharper than 4K. Scope squad, eat it up, sim it and saute. Ninja got reviews and brands galore. You ain't never seen a channel like this before. No hashtag.